Hi, Jim. Just wondering your thoughts on the new DFA ETFs in comparison to similar Vanguard ETFs. All right. Short and sweet question there. Um, My thoughts on it. Well, I like DFA. I think they're good guys. I think they run a pretty good mutual fund company. Their expense ratios are not as low as Vanguard's. They're a for-profit company. They're not uh, run at cost like Vanguard is. So that's one strike against them. The other thing you need to know about DFA is they have a huge focus on small and value stocks. That's just kind of what the focus of the company is on. And so when small value does well, DFA looks really good. When small and value does poorly, DFA looks really bad. Um, For example, when I started my kids' 529s, uh, I think I mentioned on the last podcast that I invest them very aggressively. Actually, 50% of their 529s are in small value stocks. But the way the Utah 529 works is they only let you put 25% into each of those uh, funds. So I actually had to split them, put 25% into the Vanguard small value fund and 25% into the DFA small value fund. And so I have essentially for the last decade plus been running a head-to-head comparison of DFA small value against Vanguard small value. And the Vanguard small value is still ahead over that time period. Although more recently a small value has done better, the DFA uh, fund looks a lot better over the last year or so. But basically, if you want more small value tilt to your portfolio, I think there's a lot of benefit to DFA. If you don't, because their their funds are smaller and more valuey. If that's not a big thing for you, if you don't really believe in the small value premium, you're more of a total stock market investor, uh, then you probably don't want anything to do with DFA and you want to keep your costs low and just stick with Vanguard. So the ETFs at DFA are pretty new. It's their new thing. You know, they finally realized that, hey, everybody's buying ETFs. Maybe we should have ETFs. Um, but I'm sure they're going to do a fine job with their ETFs. They've done a fine job with their mutual funds. Um, but just like, uh, in the post I wrote, I don't know how long it's been, it's probably been eight or nine years since I wrote DFA versus Vanguard on the blog. And at the end of the day, it basically comes down to whether you want, um, you know, that small value tilt or not. The other thing to know about DFA is to get into their mutual funds, you had to have a financial advisor. And so that was a big strike against them. If you didn't want to have a financial advisor, uh, the ETFs, I presume anybody can buy without any sort of permission. And so I guess if you want DFA funds, but you didn't want to pay for a financial advisor before, maybe using their ETFs is one way to get access to those funds. Um, I haven't looked at them super closely, um, but that's what I expect you to find when you look closely at the DFA ETFs. If you want your questions answered by the White Coat Investor, record your question at whitecoatinvestor.com slash YQA, or click the link in the description. My dad, your host, Dr. Dahl, is a practicing emergency physician, blogger, author, and podcaster. He is not a licensed accountant, attorney, or financial advisor, so this podcast is for your entertainment and information only, and should not be considered official, personalized financial advice.